Hey guys, Gunshy Mori back here with another video, and today we are looking at a brand new map from the same creator as Fynjordor. That is correct. He has come out with another map, Svraltalheim. Svraltalheim, yeah, that's that's correct. Now Svraltalheim is the homeland of the dwarves. And because of that, we also do get some new dwarven characters running around. But this map is also another interesting feature, as in, it is also meant to be a beginning map. So it is only 33 kilometers squared in total. Right now it's only 40% done. But what is done, I can say, looks beautiful. It's polished already, most of it. Most of the stuff that is done is already polished. And it just looks amazing. As you guys can see here, for this map, we only got three spawn regions right now. We got Seagull Bay sandy shores in the golden coast um my own my personal opinion is is that sandy shores and golden coast are probably the easiest starts um seagull bay would probably be more of a medium because there are some scorpions and other of that down that way so do keep that in mind now svelteheim here has several locations throughout the map like this little fort right here and as you can see there on the steps, you might be already able to see one of the dwarves that runs around. Now, this is one of the dwarves. There are a couple here uh, that they spawn, and they do spawn pretty high level. And as if I drop down here, you can roughly see the height comparison. I mean, you're about a foot taller than all of them. I am currently playing on the regular bob that I use for recordings. As you can see here, there are a lot of dwarves, and they are going to defend their homes. So do keep that in mind, and they are running around in metal armor, and they are carrying the dwarven shields and axes that you can get from the the Viking wardrobe mod, which is the which is the mod that adds back in the skins from uh, Fynjordor. Um, luckily, you do not need those to use this map. Um, this map is just two downloads. You got the S dinosaur in the map. You got the yeah, you got the S dinosaurs for this. We'll get to those here in a minute. And here we have all those Svaltalheim variants for the map. Now, they are mostly, from what I can tell, they do not have their own custom, uh, what are they, patterns yet. But they do have, they are, well, what you would say, and kind of like a blue glow to the normal X variant. So these S variants here, as you can see, we only got couple of them here so far i think we have six variants so we got the s allosaurus again i am using arc nucleus to spawn in my dinosaurs and all the colors are randomized the blue is the only one that has stayed from the randomization which is how i'm able to tell that there that is what the s variant has so all the s variants have uh the blue glow to them again here we have the s rex which again is just the x variant painted blue then we have the S Magmasaur, again, which this one is just a Magmasaur with blue glow. To be honest with you, I don't know how I feel about this one. It also might just be the colors I got on it. I feel like if I got some, like, black instead of a purple, this blue, the blue would definitely look better. But other than that, again, I gotta say, the blue glow does look good on the Magmasaur. I just wish I got a black on the coloring here. I'm sorry, buddy. You legit look like you were offended when I punched you. <laughs> but yeah. Then again, we got the S trike. Again, just the X variant, the blue. Then we got the Anki. I'm not sure if there's an X variant of the Anki. We do got an S variant of the. What is it? We have the S variant of the Anki. And then lastly, what we have is what they had marked on the. Was it the mod page as the aberrant Maywing? But on the spawn here, it was called the S. So yeah, let's quickly swap over to Night so you guys can see its glow. And here is the Aberrant Maywing. Again, not too much different. A couple of just glow spots on it from the normal Maywing. It's got a little... little oh, it's got a little heart on its beak. Aww. But yeah, anyways. Nipples glow. It's got glowing nipples. Yeah. And then we got the glows here from all these ones. And I gotta say, the blue glow at night... It just, I don't know if you guys have ever played any, like, magical or fantasy kind of games. This blue glow just kind of reminds me of, like, mithril kind of stuff. 
if you guys know what mithril is. I do believe that is also a resource that they're planning on adding into this is mithril. So yeah. But yeah, this this right here is why I love the the blue glow of the Magmasaur. It just just imagine like you're sitting there at night and all of a sudden you just hear you just see this emanate this glow all of a sudden, like, oh no. But yeah, this is why I thought if I got the black I would like it more. Because look at this, it's just it's just epic in the dark. And again, got the X, the S Rex and the S Aloe here, just glowing. Oh, they're actually quite bright. That is actually a very, very bright, vibrant, bright blue on your back. Yeah. And then this map, but yeah, we got the dwarves here, and as you can see here, they do spawn fairly high level. We got a 60, 390, 135, 405. So they do spawn pretty high, and that is because this, I believe, if we go up here, is a work in progress dungeon. So yeah. Cause again, you can't even get through this door yet. I'm not even sure how. I've tried everything. But yeah. Um so this is just one of the many dwarven forts around the map. And just like Fenyordor, it also has some houses that you can build in, like this one. I almost forgot to give you guys the coordinates for this island. So what they are is basically 9090 will get you here pretty close. Um, but yeah, this is the only island off the mainland of Svaltalheim. So it, this this fort should right here should be pretty easy for you guys to find. But now on to one of the houses that you can build in. Now, as you guys can see here, this house is quite like the other ones in Fjordar. It does have crops. We got citrus plants here and carrots, um, corn and potatoes, all that. And in this building right here, you can, if I am correct, place things down. Let me give it a quick shot. So I got me an S plus bed here. And, um, huh, maybe not. I might be wrong. Um, huh. Okay, so maybe you can't. All right, this is an S plus bed. Maybe let's try with actual normal mod or normal uh, beds. Uh, nope, does not look like you can place things down in here. Uh, I guess I lied to you guys. Um, but that may be something added in the future. I do, I do realize that was an interesting thing about Fenyordor is having the dwarven, or is it the villages around the map that you could build in? But yeah. Um, anyways, if you're looking for some good crops to find here on, uh, Svaltelheim, you're going to want to head to 62, 69. So, yeah. That is where the crops are located. Now, I have found some other locations on this uh, map that would be great for PvP. And one of them here is the Floating Islands. Now, there are several of these scattered throughout the map. Um, I believe there's only three right now, but yeah. As you can see, it's a long ways down, so don't fall. And if you're wondering, why did I say this wouldn't be a good PvP? base. Well, Sveltelheim, if I hadn't said this before, which I'm pretty sure I did, Sveltelheim is a map that does not allow flyers. They do not even spawn on it. So this would be a great map for beginner players, especially in beginning PvP, where you don't have to worry about people flying up and attacking you and all that. But yeah, if you're wondering on how then, how you get up to these, well, the creator here of the map here had graciously added in these little teleportation pads and as you can see here as soon as we load in it should take a quick second um this is actually the longest it's taken it why why is it when i start recording you decide to take forever all right there we go and here we are we are now down on the ground and it sounds like there's a rex nearby okay so let's get this done real quick uh yeah if you're wondering on how to get up to that island right there this portal that I'm standing at right here at these coordinates will take you there. Do be careful, there are Rexes. And now over here, we do have a slightly bigger island with a little island here attached that you could uh, either build across or use, uh, what is it, Gigantopithecus or Ravengers to walk across the vine. Um, but yeah. And the way you get up here is by going to this teleporter down here. This one is actually probably the easiest island to find. That one over there that I'm looking at in the distance. That's the one we were just at, and the one that we just now looked at is up there above us. So this portal is pretty easy to find compared to where the island's located. 
So yeah, this one should just take you straight up to that island. And here we have another little dwarven structure here that you can enter. I'm going to hold up my GPS from now on because I'm just going to quickly pop into locations here, not go into any more detail. But yeah, we got a nice little one here. It's quite like a kind of like a lookout tower. Not too high. It's right here next to these golden mountains. So shouldn't be too hard to find, especially with these coordinates. And it is right off of that first island that we looked at. The other islands over that way. So yeah. Now, another great location, and I, well, not location, a great thing that they have done here with the obelisks, as you guys know in Finjordor, the obelisks are a lot different. They're like massive spires that stand up into the sky. But here on Svaltenheim, they're more like dwarven forges. So now if I go up to this one, you do got access to, uh, do I not? Yeah, there we go. You do got access to several of the bosses right now. You got the Broodmother, the Dragon, and the Methopithecus. Metho Megapithecus. Megapithecus. Yeah. But you are going to have to find Gem of the Dragon, Gem of the Broodmother, Dr Gem of the Gorilla. And these would be basically the artifacts, and they would be found in the artifact caves on this map. And sadly, I do not know about where the artifact caves are located. I do not even know if they are fully complete and added in yet. So all I can say is if you're wanting to go fight those guys, uh, come and explore the map. Go show it some support. But anyways, let's head on to our no next location. And next up here for locations, I have the magma area, which it's pretty small, but you should be able to get some magma swords out of here if, once you head into the cave. In which it is added, um, you guys probably saw it in the trailer here for Svaltalheim. But in this location, we do got several destroyed build buildings. They're kind of, they're, yeah, they're almost exactly like most of the ruined structures from the island. It looks like, yeah, they're just those assets. But then we do got this custom one here. I guess uh, if you're looking like to build, this would probably be a good starting point. Um, but do keep in mind if you're building here, you do got spiders and bats. So, yeah. Then we have over here, we got bridges to help you cross the lava. And these kind of dwarven homes. Um, these ones you cannot enter. And I don't know if they're ever going to add it in. But maybe you'll just have to find out. So, again, do recommend exploring this map to figure out more. I have only done a brief exploration to find out key locations that are easy to find. But anyways, now on to the Magmasaur Cave. Alrighty, and here we have the Magmasaur Cave. It shouldn't be too hard to find. It's quite close to the Magma Zone. Um, if you're heading from the... If you want to head directly... Uh, what is it? West? West from the beach, like cutting through the Lava Zone. You should find it pretty easy. It's a massive cave. It just sticks out and it is glowing. So yeah, let's head in here. So... One thing I got to say about this cave is which makes me kind of think that they're going to do a Fenyordor here again on how to fight the bosses is this. Once we get down here, as you can see, we got Magmasaurs, spiders, uh, a bunch of insects and all that. Do keep in mind this cave is hot. So as we go down here, you're going to have to fight some ads and all that. But we come up to a little forge, a little anvil. We can't really interact with it, but this does got me thinking is, uh, you know, like Bela and then the two wolves and uh, the giant frozen bear from uh, Fenyordor. Sorry, I can't remember their heads off the top of my name, but yeah. This makes me think that maybe to get like the Broodmother gem and the dragon gem, you're going to have to fight mini bosses, kind of like you had to on Fenyordor. But yeah. Now, if you do are looking for magma sore eggs, they should spawn just below this, down in these magma pits. As you can see, we got one right here. And again, we do got a lot of magma sores. And there is a path along the side here. If uh, instead of going straight here, you just hug the wall and go around, you should be able to get down here pretty easy. Now, one of the this chamber is pretty easy to get to. Uh, the only one I think might people may have a difficulty getting into is this one over here which yeah there is another magma chamber back here that they spawn in and there are red gems everywhere in this lava cave so yeah now let's go find the aberration cave
Alrighty, so this is not the Aberration Cave. This is just a random cave I found on my way to the Aberration Cave, but I figured I'd point it out to you guys because it is a one-way entrance. So yeah, you could fortify this up, make it your base if you're playing PvP. Other than that, yeah, we got a little hole in the wall here. So yeah. Now on now, hopefully onto the Aberration Cave if I don't spot any other hole in the walls like this. Alrighty, so now if you're finding the Aberration Cave, I would use this building here as a reference if you do not have a GPS. So we got the floating island there and the floating island there. So it's kind of off the base of that mountain. And uh, again, this is just one of those towers I showed you earlier where you can run up and you got this structure up here. But yeah, so if you do not have a GPS and you're trying to find the Aberration Cave, use this as a land marker. But if you are looking for the Aberration Cave, it is just down here. So. Boom. This should take you right into the aberration area. You got it. Kind of a. Uh, it gets dark pretty quick. So do keep that in mind. My gamma is fully up right now. So. I hope you guys can see. But yeah. That's the way we came. And now if we head deeper in. Shouldn't be too far. You're going to hit this kind of sandy path. You just keep on following it down and down and down. I just hit the wall. You're going to pass this column. You're going to pass a bunch of columns. But yeah, eventually you're going to get down here into the Aberrant Cave. Now, in the Aberrant Cave, I have seen Feather Lights. Uh, what is it? Ravengers and... What is it? I saw one other thing that I can confirm that spawns here. What the heck? Oh, they're fish. I was wondering what just fell from the ceiling, but yeah. Um, I will get back to you guys if I find those, but yeah. The Aberration Cave is quite huge. And again, it's just back up this way. And we'll get the coordinates one more time. There are also several entrances into the Aberration Cave. This is just the quickest and easiest. Um, do mind, Stegos, do spawn in the cave. But yeah. If you just come out this way, about 61, 71... Drop down, and we just follow the cave. You should enter the aberration. And as I was saying, the aberrant zone does have is actually quite big. Uh, there are blue crystals everywhere. They are kind of modeled after the gotcha crystals instead of the uh, was it aberration crystals? We got some green ones over here. Um, yeah. And again, as I understand it, Svartelheim is kind is a uh, was it? It's supposed to be one of those maps where tech is somewhat allowed but not so i believe they said in the artifact caves you will not be able to use tech but on the surface you can and there are no flyers oh yeah now the aberration cave is quite big i ain't gonna lie i mean it's it's big it's a big room and we got this door up room up here i'm pretty sure this just circles around and connects this other tunnel yeah now, if we do keep on following it this way, we should eventually find a hole in the wall. Where is it? is it? Yep, oh, here it is. Now, this does look weird. Again, this map is a work in progress. So, what you are seeing right now is just a zone that hasn't loaded in, and boom, there we go. It's loaded in. Now, this is kind of what I would assume is the Dwarven Highway, is what I've been calling it personally. Uh, kind of a linked area in between the map. It's, yeah, it just links you to mostly a lot of zones throughout the map. If I get, let me quickly pull myself closer into the map, into the room so it does fully load. Uh, who just sent, someone just keeps on DM, and DMing me stuff. Sorry about the random noise, but yeah. Load it in, alright. See, this staircase here should take you straight up. Now, if you follow this tunnel for quite a while, it is quite dark as well. There are magmas, or was it Megalania? Everywhere. Uh, watch out, there's also a hole off here to your right. Some Ravengers. But if you follow this all the way out to the end here, do mind, there are a lot of Ravengers. You'll come up to this gate and you'll hook a left. And if you just keep on following it up and up and up, you'll eventually come to this waterfall. In which, yeah, this is another entrance to the cave, but it is definitely more dangerous than the last, so this is another entrance to the Aberrant Cave.
And if you were wondering where the other two places led, they are currently incomplete. So I would not risk going through these because these are going to pop you out under the map. So yeah, I would just stick with the aberrant cave in the dark, deadly murder cave. And here is another great location I would figure would be beautiful for a base. Definitely a PvE, maybe PvP. You do got that one uh, cliffside here to get to, but again, they could climb up the backside with picks. Not only that, you got this nice view looking over this complete dark covered forest. And what that means is we'll get down into that here in a second. But it, it, this forest below us here is amazing. But this little coliseum here, that's what I've been calling it, has an amazing view of the entire map. You got the golden mountain over there, you got the broken dwarven statue. Got a view of another floating island over there. We'll get to that one here in a couple minutes. But yeah, now this, uh, what is it, Colosseum located roughly about 60, 20, six, or 63, 20. So yeah, if you do like this location, and it is quite amazing. Uh, what is this? Is that a cave? No, it's just a little, it's a little awkward uh, hang down. But you've got a path right here. So yeah, I guess you could try and use this one for PvP as well, but... I just figured it, it looks like an amazing place. You might want to build your base here. But yeah. Now, let's go down into this covered forest. Alrighty, and right here we have the covered forest. And I mean, it's just, it's lovely down here. I mean, it remind I don't know what it reminds me of, but it just feels the way like forest should be in Ark. Just massively covered, giant trees, you know. And the nice thing about these trees is you can put tree platforms. So, yeah. They are, they do count as that. They have snap points and all that. Um, so yeah, if you do want to build out here on tree platforms, you can. But yeah, it's just something about this forest. I don't know. I just love it. I think it's just how dense it is and all that. You know what it is? You know what I think it is? If you've ever played the center, my favorite location on the center is probably the Redwood Forest. It's just because it's so massive and they put just so much work into it. And it looks just so beautiful. And I feel... I'm just getting like uh, that overgrown vibe like I do from that Redwoods. So yeah. I would definitely come check it out. Maybe build a treehouse here. Treehouse or two. Yeah, let's head on to the swamp. Alrighty, and here we have the Swamp Canyon. Now one thing I gotta say about the Swamp Canyon is... I love the skull rock carvings that the water flows out of and all that up here. And that these, uh, what are they? Excuse me. Uh, these branches grow out of. They just look amazing. And, uh, right now I'm currently standing on the bridge that, right, right over there to that side. That is the covered forest that we just saw. And over on this side, um, I don't know yet because that side of the map is not finished. Yeah. If we quickly just hop down here to the swamp. I gotta say this. It is quite, where did you guys come from? Oh, there's a bunch of dwarves down here, so I need to find where those guys came from. And I'll and then I'll show it. They probably came from right over here. But yeah. Now the swamp, I gotta say, is quite lovely. You do have a lot of dwarven structures down in here. Uh broken ones, like half complete, but mostly the swamp is just like this layer of water. Oh, what's chasing me? Oh, it's a capra. Yeah. Capra help. But yeah. If we just head down this way, we do got another bridge here. Again, as you can see, there's that covered forest. And over here, that's the side of the map that's not done. Other bridges down that way. But yeah, this is quite, quite like uh, the Genesis Part 1 swamps. And all that. Uh, you do also get these... Uh, yeah, what are these? I believe these are Plant Species X. Yep. But there are just massive Plant Species X chilling around out here. Oh, Capro. Uh, I do, would be careful here. There are, of course, there are going to be a lot of uh, predators and all that. Um, I also have Arc Editions working on here. So, you do... Uh, was it? I do know the spawns for Arc Editions do work. Um, what's this way? That is a blocked off area. I'm guessing that's probably going to be a little shoot off of the swamp and up. Uh, yeah. Looks like we are at the end of the swamp here. So yeah, Swamp isn't fairly too long, it just travels the entirety of this canyon, and 
you can find quite a bit of things down here. I do believe that is an... What, is, what kind of bullfrog? Do you, oh, no, you're just a normal one. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure if any of the X variants spawn in here from Genesis Part 1. But this swamp is just quite like Genesis Part 1. Um, although this is Faltenheim, which is the land of the dwarves, so it is uh, kind of like a golden swamp. So you got these gold lights everywhere. Oh, hi! I did not see you. Oh, we got dwarves again, so... I'm taking it that there are dwarves around here. They're probably spawning in this structure, or from this structure around it. So, yeah, I'm going to actually find exactly where these guys are spawning from. I didn't find where those guys were fa fa like spawning from, but I did find this just rock skull that appears to be one of those just on the ground here. I was like, where, where is this? Where is this? And I was like, why am I falling in holes? It's just a skull on the ground. Also, it does appear that the dwarves are just spawning at the dwarven structures located here in the swamp. So, I guess around this area right here, 5012. Uh, and, yeah, 5012 around that area. Dwarves do spawn in the swamp. So, I would watch out because the dwarves hit like a brick. As you can see here, we already got seven of them piled up. So, do be careful of the dwarves. Now, here on the back side of the map, just a little ways from the swamp, it's over that way. The overgrown forest, if this location is right off the cliffside, we got this little inlet with a pond. Now, I figured, yeah, 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 what, what's so important about this? I just thought maybe people would like to see it, because you never know. They might add an underwater or underground ocean. Yeah, I don't know how an underwater ocean works, but yeah. They may add in, I could see them definitely adding in maybe an entrance to an underwater ocean here. If not, no big deal. Um, also, ooh, do we have, what variant are you guys? Oh, we also get our direwolf spawning on the map, but yeah. Here at 68, or yeah, 68.5, you should be able to find a little cave inlet. But now let's get over to this last floating island. Again, nothing too biggy about this island it is one of the larger ones that i can see um yeah and it's teleport pad it should be i've actually not hopped through this one so let's actually figure this out Ooh, also i've been saving the snow biome for last and here we are we got this location here so 78 10 will be roughly the location to get up to the floating island i don't know where the floating island is actually located oh there it is so yeah it shouldn't be too hard to figure out it's just the what was it south of the floating island southwest so it shouldn't be too hard to find this one and again these floating islands would be amazing for pvp due to spaltelheim not allowing flyers so yeah and down here we got this amazing 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 little view of the dwarven statue and the waterfall and over here is something i thought you guys may be interested in is this little light up wall um i have no clue if this has anything to do with anything i just thought it looked beautiful so i'm going to show it to you guys so this one is located at 7809 got dimorph above us yeah also sadly there is nothing located behind this waterfall even though i saw this and i thought "Ooh, maybe but there's not all righty now located up here about 8913 this is what appears to be an entrance to one of the future caves. Because if I approach it, as you can see here, I got the invisible barrier. And I already have ghosted through and there's nothing behind this. So yeah, this cave is definitely still a work in progress. But if you're wondering where for where this one is, and if you just want to check to see if they ever add it in, uh, it's located at 8913. So now the snowy region on this map is quite, quite small. And the reason it is, is because this snowy region is a dwarven fortress. Quite like that one off the mainland. We got a little path here that leads up, and we got two statues, a little lake. But the most important thing about this is this little dwarven fort. And all I can say is, it looks good. Mm. Nice thing about these forts as well is that there are doorway... Uh, well, I guess there's not doorway there that you can enter, but... There's these little doorways here that you could use to walk up these towers. I don't know if you're going to ever want to actually try and take one of these forts for your own just because of the dwarven spawns. Um, but yeah, 
I also do believe these count as cave regions, so no tech near them. So yeah, but yeah, located up here at 9306 is a dwarven fort. I'm only seeing one dwarf running around right now. Up oh, two. Okay, and if I head up this way, it appears that the dwarven fort is not like the other one. It's not a mini dungeon. Uh, door is sealed. You never know. They might add in like a dungeon here. But yeah. Deodons and all that. So if you're looking for Deodons, I guess they do spawn up here in the snow biome. But not too much else that spawns up here. Some Carnos and Utahs. So yeah. Just a small little legit cutout. I'm not joking. It is legit just a corner of this map corner of this available map is the snow biome but yeah they do add on plan on plan on adding in more as you can see over there there is the unfinished snow biome so again this isn't just the snow biome here they are adding in a bigger location for snow biome so i guess this would be the dwarven snow fort now another location here located at 8723 this nice 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 little platform it's quite big too so i guess you could definitely build a base on it that would work although yeah this is just decorative off the side this isn't this is a can i actually does this actually count as water yes it counts as water we're getting the sound effect so yeah that counts as water so you could probably hook up a pipe just straight there for water not too bad and it's just an irrigation so some hooking off the bat yeah yeah located here roughly about 88 24 um, that's definitely not the same number I said last time, but yeah, located roughly around those coordinates. You should find this nice little platform to build a base on. Now over here, off to the side where that aqueduct runs off, got a nice little island with a red tree and a green tree. That's, uh, was it? That's definitely one from the Lost Islands, or not Lost Islands, uh, Crystal Isles, if you've ever played. I've not actually played on Crystal Isles that at all, so I don't know what spawns or what their trees look like, but... Just from there, over here, located, um, yeah, 8635, roughly around here. We got a nice little uh, platform to build on, nice little base location. Uh, I would definitely try and, like, take over these bridges and block it off, maybe take control of this region. We got what appears to be an X Spino, or X or S Spino, down there. Yeah. So, let's now go on to the next, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> But yeah, right here we got located at 8535 is a nice little place to build your base. And now just over here a little bit, we got another dwarven structure located at 8234. And if we go in, I if you've ever gone into the caves on Fenyordor and you've explored the those caves, we got more structures that appear that we could probably build in, but not. I've already tested it earlier in the video. So yeah. Got some structures here. Definitely, I could see people either in PvP or PvP if they... If, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. There are, like, on PvP servers. I know some people make PvE zones where you can't fight each other. This this would definitely, definitely make a great PvE marketplace on a server. So I bet someone could probably take this place over, rent out each of these buildings, like a stall for someone's shop, you know? And I mean, you got a lot of them, and I don't really see a lot of stuff spawning in here. I mean, you even got platforms hung up here and all that, but I highly doubt anyone's going to want to build up there. Um, these ones are blocked off, but these ones down here on the ground that you can walk up to, all of these are open. That one's actually pretty dark. Uh, this one's dark as well. Yeah, I'm guessing all these are going to be pretty dark. Uh, yeah. And over here on the far end of the room, we if we head down... I have not explored this map, so let's figure it out. Yeah, if we head down, we got another exit. So let's see what this exit is, or entrance. So I think we've actually seen this one, yeah. And then you could have another two, like, stalls or marketplaces out there, or even a, a security checkpoint, you know? Security checkpoint on this end to make sure nobody's, you know, taking in contraband to your marketplace. So yeah. So located over here at 7235, we got another entrance to the... What I would say, the Dwarven uh, Village. Yeah, a Dwarven Village. This is definitely what this is. 
I would personally use this as on a PvE like server. I would definitely use this as a marketplace. Because you just got so much room and you already got these all carved out places. I mean, is this supposed to be a forge? It it is. Never heard stone that sounded like metal. But yeah. I would definitely use this as a marketplace on a PvE server. Alrighty, now there is one more place I want to go take a look at here, and it is this location just on the other side of this invisible wall. So this is the only place we're going to go look at that is on the other side of the map, or on, on the other side of the no-go zone. And the reason it is, is because I saw dwarven structures out this way. We've got a nice statue there. Looks like we do have another dwarven fort, but this is entering the Arctic area. We also just had a storm kick up, so... Um, this, oh, it appears that we have several invisible walls heading this way, so. Definitely, if we head back here, again, this is not finished. This is a work in progress part of the map. Don't expect to be able to get over here at all. I legit had to ghost through the map. As you can see here, we actually got a nice walkway down. I'm still ghosted, so. A big old Dilophosaurus from Carrick's Better Dinos. Packy as well. But yeah. Uh, it appears to be just another Dwarven 4. Uh, not too much worked on on the inside. We do got a little room off here from the other side. So I wonder if this is going to kind of be like a marketplace like that one was. Or another village. Or even maybe... Ooh. Ooh, look at this. You actually even have floors that you can go into. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There, I could definitely see me at one point, because if you know on Fjordor, I took Helm's Deep as my base, so if I I could definitely see just because of this, I would I would definitely build my bedroom up there just so I had to run down this flight of steps every every day to get back. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's just around the corner there. So yeah, they're definitely still working on this part. But yeah, this look ooh, this fort definitely looks like it's gonna be interesting i'm betting you probably won't be able to base up here just because it appears like all the other dwarven forts are gonna be spawn points for the dwarves so and svaltalheim is the homeland of the dwarves so i don't know how much they would feel about you invading their homeland and kicking them out of their home so yeah um that is gonna be it for what i show you in this map especially because i can't like peek out over this way and see any other locations um yeah, I guess here's where what would be considered Red Ob or Red Forge. Um, do 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 do. Uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing too much else to look at here yet. It is all still working. They're all still working on these parts. So definitely see some parts here where we'll get a river. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, got a lot of ants. But yeah, now here's here's Green Ob. Yeah, I was trying to figure out where Green Ob is, so. Alrighty, guys, and now as you can see here, I am on Nekitus' server. Nekitus is the creator of Slotsfeld. Yeah, I've already forgotten his name, dang it. But he's the creator of Finjordor, the map we just looked at, and I also do believe he created Volgara. I'm not 100%, so do not take me take my word for it. If I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure someone will correct me, but... If you come here to his Twitter feed a little bit ago, he was asking, can we get this goat for Svaltalheim, please? And now, if you haven't seen this one, this one was a creature suggestion from Ned the Noodle. Let me quickly pull it up here. Now, here we go. The Mayo Taragas, the resource scouting com companion. Now, if you haven't watched this video, I highly recommend you do. Uh, link for it in the description. This was Ned the Noodle's, uh, basically, creature submission. And if you don't know who Ned the Noodle is, he is the guy that had done the... was it? He's recorded the videos telling the ARC story on his YouTube channel. Again, the link to his channel and video are in the description. So go please check him out. Go check out Nekatos. Um, also, the reason I am bringing this creature up is because I personally would also love to see this creature. And Slavelheim, I've already forgotten its name. I'm butchering it so bad right now. This is like recorded 30 minutes after I recorded. 
recorded the video. But yeah. Anyways, if you got if anyone in the modding community sees this video and would be interested in helping out Nekatus with this creature or any other creatures he wants to add to his new map, um do reach out to him because I personally would love to see this one again. But yeah. Yeah, this creature is just so beautiful. Let's quickly pull up the Twitter. Yeah, we got we got the dossier here. And first off, this dossier is really, really cool. And I believe the way that they kind of describe this guy is he's kind of like a gotcha liptopleurodon where uh, they're, they're rare, like the liptopleurodons, but they also have the randomness of the resources that they give you like the gotchas so yeah i just personally find them as they look amazing it's a goat all right we need a goat <laughs> but yeah if anyone in the modding community with skill in creating creatures and all that or any modding team i i suggest you reach out to the Nekatus and see if you uh if you guys would be interested in helping him uh make this these creatures and any other ones he wants to add on but until then, guys. But yeah. Anyways, I guess for Svaltelheim, this is going to be it. Um, If you guys do want to see me do a couple of videos on here, I might pop over. Again, this will not be part of our main series like the like when I popped over fin to Finjordor. Ooh, what is this? Uh, new location didn't look at. Let's check it out. Woo! Okay, it's just one of the tunnels. Okay, yeah. I, uh, yeah, we're going to cut it here. So... If you guys like what you saw, please do leave a like and subscribe. And if you want more, just do the like and subscribe. Um, I am currently working a job where I am on call 24-7, so I never know when I have time to record anymore. So, I am trying my best here. But, yeah. Until then, guys, this has been Gunshy More, signing off. Peace. Peace.